Okay, today on the bench we have a Nanyo, Nano, Nano, I still am not quite sure how to say it, uh, MS929SU. This is a 27-inch monitor that came out of a House of the Dead, and it's working, albeit very, very dirty and dusty. Uh, you can look and see, yeah, this is pretty, uh, pretty dirty, so we'll clean it up later, but it is working, however, it has some pretty bad color and saturation issues and if I move the neck board around a little bit I lose my screen voltage so we've got bad connections on the neck board but the most important thing here that we need to tackle is the image because if we look at it it's super it's dark on the left and then as you go to the right it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter um, it's way too bright on the right and as we go to the left it gets darker and darker and darker and then too dark so something's going on here with this I hope it's not a flyback uh, I have a cap kit here ready to go so the first thing that we're going to do is remove it from the monitor inspect it cap it reflow it hook it back up and see if our situation has improved I'm hoping it's caps if all of this work does not affect this then we're looking at a flyback and I don't know if you can acquire these flatbacks. Um, they look an awful lot like the ones in the the uh, Sanwa chassis. The 27C uh, 27Z, I forget. One of the ones I just worked on, but th this looks an awful lot like one of those. Now, I can't say for sure. I don't even know if these are available, but I'm hoping it's not a flatback issue because I don't know where to get one. So, first thing we're going to do is cap it and reflow it and see what that does. So there's the color bars. Way too dark on the left. Now it's actually not too bad on the right now, but still it gets darker as you go to the left. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad there. So it's not a color gun problem uh, because the red is perfectly fine here, but it just gets darker and darker. It's almost gone on the left. So let's uh, cap it, reflow it, inspect it and see what difference that makes. Okay, so here we have the chassis off the tube and on the bench, and I started doing the cap kit. So I was gonna do the cap kit and then talk about it afterward and show the intricacies and details and how it's dual res. You can have uh, medium res versus standard and all that stuff. But the very first cap that I took out, <laughs> this may be a little bit of an adventure here, the very first cap I took out right down here, 250 volt, 10 microfarad, uh, as suspected, <laughs> I, I figured that the caps were probably bad causing that brightness problem from side to side, but look, check this out. Very first cap I took out, huge evidence of leakage, and look at the cap itself. Look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think we're in for an adventure here on these caps because that one is definitely leaking everything out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on and I'm going to save all these caps that I find that are leaking and set them aside. We can show up if there's any ones like that or ones that are worse than that. And we can uh, see how it looks afterwards. So yeah, I'm going to uh, continue on and any other caps that are leaking I'm going to set aside and we'll show those later. But I'm going to cut away, do the full cap kit, do the reflow. If there's anything else I see that is of note that needs to be shown like oh look at this kind of thing like like this I will show that cut in and show that but otherwise I'm gonna cut away when I come back I'll have the full cap kit done the reflow and then we'll talk a little bit about how this chassis operates and uh, kind of go from there well cutting back in here because I'm making progress here I got all of this section done with new caps but then when I got to this uh, 470 microfarad cap here by the vertical IC I looked and saw the yoke header pins for the vertical deflection yoke. If you look here, uh, see if we can show it. VDY is vertical deflection yoke, and then the header pins over here, horizontal deflection yoke, those are in good shape. But if we look at the vertical pins, they're not so in good shape. They are uh, a bit oxidized and not looking very good. So. I will say that I didn't find any other caps that were leaking. Uh, it was just this one cap that was leaking. The rest of these so far that I've done are all, I don't want to say in good shape, but none of them showed any signs of leakage or being bad. But we definitely need to take care of this issue here on these 
on these header pins because, man, I am filthy from this chassis. Um, yeah, so the best course of action on this, we're gonna grab a uh, one of these uh, etching pins that you can get. This, these are meant for automobiles, to, for scratching off paint. So it's a true fiberglass pin as opposed to the other ones that are not actual fiberglass. So we need to actually try and clean these off here. So let's get a little bit more and just kind of I think that will work on the inside and I can't really get much on the inside here okay so I think that will work if we look at that that is much better so we can put these back in and proceed on but first we're going to clean up all of this uh, all these fiberglass bristles here I'm just gonna brush them off onto a rag here Man, I am zoomed in quite far. Okay, let's just clean all these up because these will get in your skin. So you, after you use this, after you use this uh, tool, you kind of have to take all these bristles and brush them off directly into your trash can or into a towel, and then flap the towel into the trash can, whatever you want to do. But yeah, you just lay your arm or whatever on your workbench, and next thing you know, they're in your arm. So and I can tell you from experience, yes, this is a true fiberglass pen because. Uh, that's happened to me more than one occasion. So, all right, so I'm gonna get these back in. All right, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna solder it back in and continue on and hopefully I run into no more issues and then we can show this thing in action afterward. Okay, and just like that, we're all done. Full cap kit, full reflow. I found nothing else wrong except for one thing, which I'll mention here in a moment. But as far as the caps go, this was the only one that was leaking. Everything else, no bulging, no leaking, everything was all right. Uh, I did a full inspection, uh, nothing was amiss. All the solder joints were good, nothing cracked, nothing broken, no components that were blackened, no resistors burned up, everything was good, except for the one thing I'm about to mention. So on the K7400, 7500, U2000, U5000, there are, right out here along the heat sink, there's the HOT, which this one conveniently has the HOT on this heat sink as well. There's the HOT, a control diode, and the transistor that's controlled or that's responsible for controlling your width, the ability to control your horizontal size. The transistor's mounted right here. Now, there, it just so happens that on, well, I should say the 70, the 7500 mounts it remotely, but uh, this chassis has the same type of technology. There is a control transistor right here. It's Q508, and that's responsible for generating your horizontal size. Right there, Q508. Now, when I was doing reflow on this, I noticed that I made sure to pay attention to this transistor because these chassis are notorious for this uh, burning up the pads. So it just so happens on this one we had the same problem. But what was odd about this is that I had I had full width control. When this was brought to me and I was testing it, trying to make some initial adjustments, I was able to control the width, no problem. Uh, everything was fine. There was no pin cushion issues. There was no, no no problems except for just the the black on the left and it was getting brighter to the right, which we already showed. That was the only issue I could find. But I know that in the past, based off of seeing posts about this from people, that that transistor likes to burn up the pads. So I, when I was doing the reflow, I inspected that and sure enough, the pad for the outboard leg had a giant solder blob on it, like somebody had tried to reflow it in the past and just kind of added to a solder to the pad. But the pad was oxidized. I'm not sure how we had control before because when I, as soon as I removed that original solder, the pad, the solder, uh, let's see, the pad, I'm sorry, came right off with the solder. <sighs> So I had to use the fiberglass pen. I'm sorry I have no footage of this. I, I hit the record button, but I must have not did it properly because I lost the footage of me doing that. I'm not even sure if I, I don't think it recorded. So I, I don't have footage of that, I'm sorry. I hit the button, but I guess it didn't record. I, I don't know. 
And I feel bad because I didn't have any footage of this. So anyway, so the, the solder came right off with the pad. So I had to take the pad, scrape away, scrape away the oxidation, put the pad back over the leg, and then scrape away the trace and solder to the trace and to the, the pad next to it. So let me zoom in here and we can see. That should be good. Oh, get the stuff out of the way. And we are right, right here, right there. So I had to fix that trace by scraping the pad away, putting the pad back over the leg, and then soldering to the, the point next to it. And then the middle and the right were not, they were pretty oxidized, but they still were connected to the trace. So I scraped away the trace and soldered to the trace with both those legs, I had to repair that leg. And yeah, so if you have one of these MS-29s, I'm sorry, uh, MS-929SU, if you have one of these, I, and you work on it, recap it, reflow it, whatever, I would highly recommend reflowing and inspecting and repairing the, the pads on the horizontal width control transistor, uh, or you probably end up with width problems at some point. So um, I think we just had a little bit of sliver of solder still going to the trace or the pad that allowed it to work, but because uh, we had width control, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we might have had width control problems in the future if I hadn't have found that. So that's the only anomaly I found. Everything else seemed okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it back on the tube, power it up, adjust our B+. Plus. Now for B+, plus, you want to attach your, well to measure B+, plus, I should say, you don't have to have an alligator clip, but you want to clip onto this resistor here. If I can remember what it, which resistor it is. Uh, R967, this guy right here. So this leg of R967 is the regulated B+, and we're looking for it to be about 75, 75 volts DC. Now on the side here is where you adjust it. We have a B plus adjustment for the 15 standard res and the 25 medium res. And if you look here, they're potted over, so I can't adjust them, but we're looking for it to be about 75 volts DC. And actually, I think this might be the same exact flyback that's in the Sanwa 27Z, whatever it is. Uh, the ones I just fixed a few videos back. So you adjust them right here individually and you test it at this leg of R9, what was it, 967. And yeah, we're looking for 75 volts DC, which we'll do that once we power it up. And we'll also go over some of these adjustments here. So on the main remote board, we have the contrast adjustment. We have, let's zoom in here. Contrast adjustment, red gain, green gain, blue gain, brightness, horizontal width, horizontal position, vertical size, vertical position, and then down here we have a number of other adjustments. We have subcontrast, oh no, subcontrast, blue cutoff, green cutoff, red cutoff. Then we have APL now, or ABL, I'm sorry, Alpha Bravo Lima. So when I was testing this before I started filming, I was adjusting this ABL, this SPC24 and SPC15. And when I adjusted those, it really didn't do anything. I'm not sure what ABL is or SPC2415, obviously for 15 kilohertz and 24 or 25, but I don't know what ABL, SPC are. I adjusted these to the full spectrum. It really didn't make any difference on the image whatsoever. So I don't know what these are supposed to do. Now, I think I researched it and couldn't find out what they're what they're supposed to do, but I just, you know, in full disclosure here, I didn't really spend a lot of time researching it, but adjusting these really didn't seem to do anything. But we have horizontal hold for medium res, horizontal hold for standard res, parallelogram, uh, horizontal size limit, if you want to limit the amount of horizontal size for the image. We have trapezoid, vertical linearity, and vertical size limit, if you want to limit how how tall the image can be. So there's your basic adjustments. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know what ABL or the SPCs are. If somebody out there knows, let me know. But they don't seem to affect anything when I adjust them. So and then we have our connection here for uh, still on 25. So 25 medium res, you can flip it over to 15 kilohertz standard res, and it's a dual res chassis. So. The yoke is uh, specific for this chassis. You can't just throw this on any other on any other yoke, like the 7500 and so on and so forth. So that's about it to, to go over. Um, everything should uh, work, hopefully. I mean, pretty confident. 
Here's a couple oddball uh, caps in here, like 100 and 180 microfarad and a couple of 680 microfarad. Not non-common ones, but I was able to make it work. So we also got this, uh, the header pins for the vertical all cleaned up, like I showed a few moments ago from your perspective. So nothing left now but to get it back on the tube, turn it on, and see if it looks any better. Okay, so we're all hooked up, ready to go. We've got our B-plus set ready to read on our resistor. We have our test pattern generator ready to go. We're all hooked up, and we should be ready to test this. Now we're hoping to see a full bright picture without that brightness problem from the left to the right. I'm 100% positive that replacing these caps, especially that leaky one, will have fixed the issue. Uh, I have not adjusted anything from before, so we still should have a perfect square image. Just we're hoping to have that brightness problem resolved. I did also look up, I uh, did some more research on what the SPC is for the uh, 15, 24 SPC and SPC 15. It's pin cushion. I, I believe it's spatial pin cushion, but those are the pin cushion adjustments. Now, the reason I didn't know what SPC was was because when I was adjusting this previously, I was turning those pots and it didn't do anything on the screen. Now, I don't know if the pin cushion adjustments were not working because of bad caps, but we're going to have to test that again. So I felt bad not being able to describe what the SPCs were. I thought that was pin cushion, but when I adjusted them, nothing happened. So we'll test out the pin cushion this time, make sure they work. And I also found out through researching this that I was incorrect on the B plus adjustment. The, the, the B plus adjustment is actually supposed to be 76 volts, but it's only for standard res. The standard res B plus setting should be around 76 volts. But for medium res, which is what we're testing this on, which is going to go back in the house of the dead, it should be around 116 volts. So we're hoping to see around 116 volts on the meter. And then we'll test 15 kilohertz and verify it's 76 volts. And maybe we can try and adjust adjusting those pots as needed. But if it's close to 116, we may just go ahead and leave it. Okay, after all that's explained, uh, let's go ahead and turn on the meter to volts DC. And we're sitting right around 0 0.058. Let's turn on our test pattern generator. And let's see if our problem has been resolved. One, two, three. Okay, comes on, nothing blew up. Please. Ha! Would you look at that? Awesome. Woohoo! Get a little gousing issue, especially in that corner, looks like. Let's go to RGB. Wow, fantastic! Um, I don't have my degausser with me. You can really see the House of the Dead burn on there, but man, fantastic. So bad caps. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, convergence looks good. Uh, yeah, let's see if our... Oh, we're at 118. Hmm. That should be 116 according to my research, but we can try and adjust that. So uh, spatial pin cushion for the 24 kilohertz. Let's see if it works here. Yes, it does! Wow! Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. <laughs> Headphone warning, sorry. Uh, look at that, it works great. Well, I, I wonder why it wasn't working before. It had to be bad caps. It had to have been bad caps that was keeping that pincushion from working. But Well, all right! Fantastic! Let's turn this off. And we'll switch this to standard res. And we'll move this over to standard res. And let's see if standard res works. 75.8. That's perfect for... Hey, hey. Awesome. Well, we're way too wide. Holy cow. Does width control work? It should. Oh, yeah. There we go. Runs around in underwear. Freakazoid. Freakazoid. Sorry, just popped in my head. Okay, let's adjust our pincushion for 15 kilohertz because we're a bit crooked. There we go. Nope. Other way. Nope. That's right. Hmm. I'll have to say that, no, it needs to more adjustment here. Because over here, we need to... That's better. Okay, there we go. Now let's redo our width. Fantastic. Look at that. Awesome. Let's turn the contrast down a bit. Okay, there we go. Fixed. Uh, and we're supposed to be 76. We're 75.8. That's perfect. Let's see if we can flip this back to uh, medium, I should say, and adjust that 
B plus pot. 118, yeah, we should be, yeah, you can see how much difference there is between standard and medium is that now the medium is not wide enough. So if we adjust the width back to right there, perfect. Now again, if, if for some reason, let's play around with this. Let's say if the horizontal size limit was not adjusted properly, uh, and I tried to increase the width. See, right, right now the horizontal size is maxed out. And let's see if I can illustrate this with brightness here. The horizontal size is maxed out and we're still about an inch and a half or so from the edge on both sides and the horizontal size pot's maxed out. So in that case, we have to adjust the horizontal size limit pot, which will then get us back to full size. So we'll stretch it out a little bit more and then decrease our horizontal size pot. There we go. Now let's turn our brightness pot back down and we want roughly right there. Awesome. Okay, now let's see if we can adjust our B plus down to 116. And that would be this pot, but it's covered in covered in goo! I'm trying here. I may just have to say it's fine because I don't want to damage anything. Yeah, I mean I could throw alcohol on this and just kind of this it would just eat this away. But I don't know how deep that potting, that sealant goes in there. It's just room temperature vulcanization cream is all it is. Yeah, I can't really turn it much. That, we'll leave it at 118. I mean, it's supposed to be 116, but I don't want to cause any damage trying to grind all this RTV out of here. And It could also be much different. It could also be, when we put an actual PCB on here, it could end up being a lot lower, so. And 117.4 got to. Let's just actually try a real PCB and see what that does. So we'll turn that off, turn this off, and I need to move some of this stuff out of the way here. And let's grab... Cruising USA. Oh, I got my Monty Python box set here sitting in the way. Don't ask why it's sitting here. Your channel powers activate. Okay. All right. Sorry about that whole sequence of events there and that giant fiasco, but I had to cut away because this was laying on the. I had to reposition the monitor because this was laying on the arm of the frame here and I didn't have my uh, signal hooked up from the JAMA harness. I still had the TPG hooked up, so I had to use two hands. So I had to cut away and hook all this up. And now we're ready to finally test an actual PCB here. So one, two, three. Okay, and we're hoping for 116, but we're still at 117.7, and there you go. It's working. Contrast needs to come down. Uh, my brightness is a bit too high too, but actually, let's just turn the green down. That's what we need to do. Where's my driver? Here it is. Oh yeah, green's too high. Let's turn down our green drive right there. Okay, brightness is too high as well. Let's turn that down. Okay, all right, we're shifted too far to the right, but that's okay. Not worried about the size right now. Let's just uh, see what we look like. Yeah, all right, well, let's get the camera on the tripod, make some adjustments, and just make this look as good as we can, and we'll call this a success. Okay, so off camera, I played around with the B plus pot a little bit more, kind of showed it who's boss, and I was able to get down to 116.6, which is close enough, and we'll call that good. So now B-plus is perfect on 
medium res and standard res, perfect enough, close enough. So now let's see if we can adjust it here, make it look a little bit better. We need to shift our horizontal position over slightly to here. Okay, and our width is perfect right there. Vertical size needs to come down a bit. That's position. Let's bring the size down, shift it up. All right, there's perfect, perfect square image. Fantastic. We're a little bit too red, so let's turn our red down slightly right there. And our blue, a little bit more is too much, I'll say right there. And the green, a little bit more down. That's good there. Let's turn our brightness back up. And our brightness needs to stay about there. Well, um, hmm. Still a bit dark. That's better. Uh, focus is good. And green is still... I'm going to try the green cutoff. Green's still a little bit too high. Right there. Uh, all right. How's that look? What do you think of that? I say that's pretty darn good. Except it's too bad about that screen burn. This The game... This is only ever going to be able to go in a game that has a black background or <laughs> go back in uh, uh, House of the Dead. But there you go, ladies and gents. I think we have a winner on our hands. Uh, sorry, this was a little bit of a discombobulated video, um, but it's why it's the amateur channel. So I'll let it run. Make sure nothing goes haywire. I need to do a little bit of degaussing, but otherwise not too bad. Uh, I appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.